Beef stir fry. That's what we're making today. I hope I get famous enough that Uncle Roger does a review of this one day. Hiya. Uh... Hopefully he takes it easy on me. By the time I'm famous enough for him to start watching me, this video should be two, three, four, five weeks old. More like two, three, four, five years old. Anyways, we're gonna lay out our fresh ingredients. I'm gonna show you uh, which ingredients, like you should have them all prepped up ahead before you start cooking because once you start cooking in the wok, you start, you don't stop. I'm executive chef James McKennis and welcome to my kitchen. So we're gonna start off with a Thai sauce. I know, Thailand, China, they're close enough. So we're gonna put one cup sugar, one cup water, one cup vinegar, all into a pot. Bring it to a rapid boil and then turn it down to a simmer. We're gonna add garlic and chili flake. This is a gastrique sauce. If you just had it um, without the garlic and chili, you'd call it a basic gastrique. You can add what you want to it. We're gonna go with garlic and chili. You can put some lemongrass in there if you wanted. You can put some ginger in there if you wanted. You could make it your own. But that's what we got going in there, all right? It's going to be delicious. You just wanna reduce it by two thirds till it basically fits back into that one cup. That's all you need. You're gonna use that with some soy sauce later on. It's gonna be delicious. Trust me, that is exactly what you wanna use for your stir fries. All right, so we have things laid out here. We've got our, in the way we're gonna cook them too, we've got our uh, onion, carrot and celery, pepper, cremini mushrooms. I've got some king oysters here and our steak, plus some bean sprouts, garlic. And when I, when I say the way we're going to cook them, we're going to put these in the pan first. And then we're going to add, because the onions take the longest to caramelize and get the flavor. We're going to add our next hardest vegetables that take the longest. And then when they're half cooked, we'll add the peppers because they don't take as long. And then we're going to add the mushrooms at the end, the sprouts at the very, very end. The meat's going to go somewhere in here. And I've never used king oysters before, so we're going to prep these up. And then we're going to cut up the steak. And then we're going to hop on over to the wok. Okay, so I decided to just quarter them going a uh, long ways, top to bottom or bottom to top. And... Uh, this way you can see the king oyster mushroom for all of its beauty and glory in the plate that I didn't like if I was just gonna chop them up into a dice What would be the point of getting such a fancy dancy pantsy uh, type of mushroom for the ribeye? I'm just taking my boning knife, and I'm just gonna basically go around the border the edges of it removing any fat that I don't want anything that's excess uh, We're also gonna take out the fat uh, on the inside. So we're gonna remove the the cap then we're going to take the fat out as well. We're going to discard that. You could use that fat. You know, at the restaurant, what we do is I take all those fat trimmings like that and I freeze them. And then after I get 10, 15 pounds, I take it out of the freezer and I render it down for tallow butter. So we make we mix equal part tallow with uh, butter, roasted uh, garlic and rosemary, and we make it, we whip it up as a butter. And we melt that on top of our steaks. You're also going to want to get some kind of side dish for your stir fry. I chose to use rice. So there I am. I'm putting my knuckle in there. You want to put your finger at the top of the rice, although I don't really have enough rice to fully fill the pot because I'm only making enough for us. You want the water to come up to your knuckle or just follow directions on the bag. Now I'm giving the king oysters a sear first and then a little bit of French technique here. I'm going to reserve them to the side. There we go with a little salt and pepper because you want to season dishes as you go, okay? So we just put some salt on there. I think I put some pepper on here, or I just took, I just took them out. So I did it like this because I didn't want them to get, uh, to try and cook them in an overcrowded pan when I do the mushrooms. Now I've got my onions going in there. And this stove, my front right burner there, see how I got that wake, breath of the fire? That burner has four gas jets on it. Every other burner on the stove has one gas jet. It burns four times as hot in power boil mode. Now I'm adding my beef in. I'm going to give it a couple stirs, some flick of the wrist. 
and that's going to get mixed up. We want to get a little bit of a crust on there. And I, from start to finish, you take all the time lapses out. I think I cooked the stir fry for about eight minutes. So there goes my salt. There goes my pepper. We mix it up a bit more. Don't forget to add your MSG. Uncle Roger, if you're watching, I got MSG. All right, couple more flicks. We got a little more wake. Now we're gonna go to our next hardest vegetable. So the carrot and the celery are the only hard, hard vegetables, but I like to give the onions a chance to caramelize first. We're gonna add the garlic now, because garlic doesn't taste that take that long to cook. Okay, we're going in with our, uh, I think we use ginger and onion powder. And we're just gonna keep mixing it. Now that the onions, carrots, and celery are three quarters cooked, we're gonna add our soft vegetables, our mushrooms, and our peppers. Now I guess some could argue the mushrooms are gonna water it out now. They're gonna release a lot of moisture. Taste it as you go, I'm adding more MSG. Why you feel MSG so weak, so weak? Many people say MSG bad for your body, but Uncle Roger say good food is better than body. I'm gonna hit it with some more salt and pepper. You wanna make sure it's delicious. So taste while you go. Keep mixing it up and stirring it around. Right near the end here, we're adding the sprouts, some Thai sauce, I overdid it a little bit, and some soy sauce. So if you put too much liquid in there, you can pour it out, or you can make yourself a little well, like I'm gonna build in a second here. And, oh no, I guess I'm gonna taste it first. Yeah, it tastes fine. There, there's that little well I was talking about. And you can boil some of it off real fast. You'll boil out some of that water and you'll reduce it further into a nice sticky substance. Now we're gonna throw those king oysters back in and give it another good flick. Maybe a mix with a spoon if the pan's too heavy. For plating, it's gonna be nice and simple. We're gonna take some of our white rice. We're gonna put it into our bowl. We're gonna pour a little bit of that soy Thai sauce mix right into the rice, and now we're gonna to top it up with the stir fry. And that's all it took. You could garnish this with some spring onions, or some sesame seeds, or even some chives if that's what you can get. And there you have it. We've got a nice bowl here with a beef stir fry in it. Mm, I definitely like these big baby king oyster mushrooms. They have a, a meaty flavor all on their own. Definitely supported in the background with the creminis because they also uh, have a like a beefy kind of flavor. We got this delicious ribeye steak in here. You can just see it glistening. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. In my mouth, I can hear almost the borderline raw crunch of the sprouts because we chose to put those in last. And the white rice, and that's why I made it a little wet. I got this white, just this plain white rice and pouring that extra stir fry sauce on there. Really just gives that rice an elevated flavor. So I really hope you enjoy making a quick and easy stir fry like this. I know I did. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week in my kitchen. Till then, I've been Executive Chef James McCannis.